Hey up everybody, I'm just about to move on to the next part of my loco build so without any further ado then I'll bring you over to the workbench and show you what I'm going to get up to next on it. I've got two of these vibrating levers to make and, and two bushes and I've got some material here, it says to make it from 3 sixteenths this is actually a few thou bigger so I'll just take a skim off and that'll take the rust off it anyway by doing that uh, so two of them, then out of the same material I've got two return cranks to do once I've got those made we can have a look at using this jig to set the return cranks up onto the actual wheels of the loco uh, using this diagram here Come on then let's just have a bit of an update where I've got to. Right, I've got the top to size, three quarter across the top. I've got the section here to size, five eighths, so there's a step down of a sixteenth on each side. That's parallel now. I've still got to cut this angle on from uh, somewhere there down towards that radius on both sides. I'll do that later. So while I've got parallel sides to fit in the vise I'm going to get this relief hole drilled straight through and then from the bore to that hole there's either a saw cut or a milling cut whichever you want to do and that's to give it um, flexibility so that when you get your bolt through here I've got to drill a hole through there. That's the clamping bolt.
You don't really have to do any of this in milling machine, you can just do it in vice with your hand tools. There's nothing really um, important size wise as long as it's, you know, within a few thou, I suppose. The, the most important bit is the hole centres. So now I've got the radiuses filed on. I've just got to put the slot in from the small hole to the large hole for the clamping bolt that's going to come in this way on both of them. There's two together there. Right, shall we have, have a little bit of an update? Uh, the vibrating lever, I've made them uh, without showing it really because it's pretty much same as making these return cranks. It's just a bit of uh, bench work with your file and your saw or if you've got a milling machine you can, uh, you can do a milling machine. You have got to put a 30 second recess half inch wide across that middle hole and then also I've made these two phosphor bronze bushes they're going to press into the vibrating lever on one end so what I'm going to do now then I'm going to I'm going to just blackadise these before I put these bushes in uh, and then we'll have a look at this return crank jig and set in the return crank onto the actual wheels Just getting carried away with myself there. I forgot to put this slot in to join that small hole for the clamp. Also just off camera then I've made these pins uh, to this drawer in. Two crank pins Straightforward turning, it tells you to make them out of silver steel, but I've just used I tensile material, which is what I did on my meter made, and they've been satisfactory. And they're just going to press into the recess on the back of the um, return crank. There's a shallow recess, and the head of that will press into that recess and then I've also got these bushes to press into the vibrating lever and then I'm ready for setting these up onto the onto the return crank pin on the wheels but what you normally do with these is if you're making these from scratch like I did my meter made when you've made the wheels what you do before you put them on the axle um, to quarter the wheels you set this return crank at 180 degree position with a dummy axle um, like I did on my meter made videos but because this loco has already had its wheels made and fitted to the axle 
and I've just refurbished them. I'll just show you how I'm going to do it. Uh, a slightly different method, but still using this return crank jig. On the vibrating lever, the bush head is on the same side of the recess where that cutout is. Let me see if I can squeeze you in here. Right. Normally then using this jig when the wheel's not attached to the axle when you when you're in process of making this uh, you put a dummy axle in uh, this is with the crank pin fitted you put your dummy axle in and then you put this middle part of the jig rests on the axle on the bottom of the axle then your crank pin rests on this uh, step and then the centre line of your crank lines up with that step so because I, because these wheels are already on um, what I've done then I've set my scribing block to the exact well within a couple of thou anyway to the exact line where the wheel is at the bottom so that's where my dummy axle would come then using some shimming material you've got to set your jig to your scribing block on the middle portion where it would rest on the axle right so I don't need my scribing block now so that is the bottom of my axle in the middle then you've got to put the jig under the crank pin in its forward position and just push the loco along till it rests on that next step so that's the bottom of the axle that's the bottom of the crank pin and then you draw a centre line down the centre of the return crank continue it on the end and then you line the centre portion onto this next bigger step that way you've got exactly uh, 180 degree orientation then because the wheels are quartered the 90 degrees out of phase so on the other side you do the exact same thing but obviously the 90 degrees out and once I get this clamped up I can then drill uh, for a pin a selloc pin or a roll pin straight through the axle once I know my position
Well, that's it for this part then. Um, if you found that useful and interesting, etc., etc., give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And I'll catch you on the next part of this then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.